Did you know that a little over a century ago, vampires were believed to stalk Rhode Island? Indeed, it was a time when New England farm families were disturbing the eternal rest of their deceased relatives, suspected of being vampires, in a misguided quest to protect the living. These modern-day vampire hunters would often remove and burn their loved ones' hearts. The origins of such chilling practices trace back to Eastern Europe. It was from these regions that the superstition of disinterring supposed vampires began, eventually spreading to Western countries like France and England in the 1700s. From there, it crossed the Atlantic to rural New England, a place where vampire scares were a common occurrence right up until the late 1800s, particularly in Rhode Island. The trigger for these vampire panics was often the death of a person, usually from a contagious disease, and in New England, almost always from tuberculosis. When others in the vicinity started dying too, people, ignorant of the concept of germs, believed that the first deceased had returned from the grave to drain the blood of their family members. The subsequent exhumation, staking, burning, beheading, and other practices were attempts to shield the community from further harm. The vampire hunters rarely returned from their gruesome task disappointed. Many natural signs of decay like bloating and bleeding were mistaken as evidence of nocturnal feasting. Let's delve into the stories of a few real-life vampires from America and elsewhere. The real lives behind our modern legends. Take the case of Peter Plogodjevic, a Serbian villager accused of being a vampire. A few weeks after his death in 1725, he was exhumed and staked through the heart. Folklorist Paul Barber, in his book, Vampires, Burial and Death, refers to Plogodovic as the quintessential European vampire, as his exhumation follows the broader pattern of the superstition. Then there's Arnold Powell, a Serbian who, in the early 18th century, broke his neck after a fall from a hay wagon. He was accused of vampirism after his death, and exhumed following a series of deaths in his village. The Austrian military authorities investigating the deaths published their findings, spreading the vampire superstition to Western Europe, from where it eventually reached the New World. Lastly, we have Nellie Vaughan, a young girl of just 19, buried in 1889 in West Greenwich, Rhode Island. Today, she is almost as famous as Mercy Brown, another accused vampire whose exhumation made international headlines. Vaughan's cemetery has often been the target of vandalism, with her headstone repeatedly broken. In conclusion, the superstition of vampires was born out of fear and ignorance of the natural process of decay and disease. It spread across continents causing panic, disturbance and desecration of graves. It underlies the classic horror tales of Dracula and continues to be a source of fascination in modern media. It's a chilling reminder of how fear can grip societies, leading to actions that from a modern perspective seem nothing short of horrifying.